sorting of materials into groups. There is a large variety of objects around us. We see a chair, a bullock cart, cycle, cooking utensils, books, clothes, toys, water, stones and many other objects. All these objects have different shapes, colors and uses. We group these materials just for the sake of our convenience. So what is the reason behind grouping of materials? Why do we need to group materials? The main reason behind the grouping of materials is for our convenience. Such grouping helps us in locating the substance. In everyday life we often group materials for uh, the sake of our convenience. At home we usually store things in such a manner that similar objects are kept together and uh, dissimilar objects can be separated from each other. In fact, such arrangement help us to locate them easily. Just for example, a grocer usually keeps all type of biscuits at one corner of his shop, all soaps at another corner while grains and pulses are stored at some other place. So it is easier for him to handle various customers. There is another reason why we find such grouping useful. Dividing materials in groups makes it convenient to study their properties and also observe any pattern in these properties. Now let us see some properties on the basis of which materials are grouped or classified. The first one is appearance. Materials are classified on the basis of their appearance. The materials which are similar in appearance are kept together and the materials which are looks different from each other are separated from the other one. Just for example, metals like iron, copper, aluminium, these are kept together because of their metallic luster, their shining property and wood is kept separate, uh, wood is kept separated, wood is kept separately from these materials because wood is not lustrous.
now further uh, something about shining property the shining property of iron copper aluminium it becomes dull after some time because of the action of air and moisture on them the next property is hardness we can compress or scratch some materials easily these materials are not hard enough these are called soft materials and we cannot compress or scratch some other materials easily these are hard materials so on the basis of hardness materials are soft and hard The next property on the basis of which materials are grouped is uh, solubility. We will try different substance uh, to dissolve in water. Substance uh, like uh, sugar and salt, they completely dissolve or disappear in water. But the substances like uh, sand, cement, etc., it does not dissolve in water. So, on the basis of uh, this property, substances are of two types. Soluble substances, the substances which completely dissolve in water are soluble substances the example of soluble substances are sugar salt etc when sugar salt is dissolved in water it completely disappears in the water. We won't see any sugar or salt in the solution. Insoluble substances. Substances which do not dissolve in water are insoluble substances. The examples are sand chalk powder, glass, cement, etc. Now move about solubility. Some liquids also dissolve in water. Liquids like vinegar, lemon, they completely mix in water. And some other substances like oil they make a complete separate layer on the top of the water they do not mix with water
in fact uh, gases also dissolve to some extent in water for example oxygen partially dissolves in water and it supports the life of animals and plants in the water it is important for the survival of animals and plants that live in water so the substance water which is dissolving the other materials also play an important role in the functioning of our body because it can dissolve a large number of substances in it and it is available to the body along with the water now if a substance is not getting dissolved in water then what is happening to it either it will float on the surface of water or it will sink in the bottom substance which is not dissolved in water and is lighter than water will float on the surface of water the examples oil and the example which is insoluble and heavier than water will sink at the bottom of water stone iron etc the next property transparency on the basis of property of substance through which things can be seen materials can be classified into different categories on the basis of transparency materials can be classified into following categories transparent material the material through which things can be seen clearly the example of transparent material are glass water air etc opaque material when things cannot be seen through the substance then the such type of material is opaque material
for example wood cardboard metals these are examples of opaque materials translucent material materials through which objects can be seen but not clearly are known as translucent The examples of translucent materials are some plastics, oil soaked paper, hence materials differ in their appearance or the way they mix in water or other liquids they may float or sink in water or may be transparent translucent or opaque these can be grouped on the basis of similarity or differences in their properties